I am Sandeep Karai, the creator of 2melbourne.com.au, a website for everything Melbourne. Welcome to another episode of The Untold Stories of Melbourne. This time, we are going to investigate Sunbury's claim as the birthplace of the ashes. Sunbury is a satellite city of Melbourne, situated 40 kilometers northwest of the Melbourne CBD. This beautiful township is a little bit of a country and a little bit of a city. But with so many housing estates springing up everywhere in Sunbury, it's only a matter of time it's going to be a full-fledged suburb of Melbourne. Sunbury is also part of Australia's cricketing history and is widely known as the birthplace of the ashes. Now I'm going to take a peek back at the history to bring the truth back. Let us look at the history part of it to see whether Sunbury is really the birthplace of the ashes. The ninth test between England and Australia was played in 1882 at the Kennington Oval in London. The Australian team led by Bill Murdoch played only one test in their 1882 tour of England. In the first innings, Australia took 63 runs, which gave the England a lead of 38 runs after they took 101 runs in the first innings. In the second innings, Australia managed to take 122 runs and the England needed only 85 runs to win the test. But Australian fast bowler Fred Spofforth took four wickets in the final over, allowing only two runs, which made the England eight wickets short of victory. It was a shock loss for the English side by all means. An astonished Orwell crowd felt silent, struggling to believe that England could possibly have lost to a colony on home soil. After the match, a mock obituary was published by the Sporting Times, which read, in affectionate remembrance of the English cricket, deeply lamented by sorrowing circle of friends and acquaintances, rest in peace. NB, the body will be cremated and ashes taken to Australia. In 1882, English cricketer Ivo Bly was contracted to play three matches in Australia. Ivo Bly used to joke that his team would bat the kangaroo in his dead and recover the ashes. Ivo Bly arrived in Australia with a team of eight amateurs and four professionals. William Clark of Rupertswood Estate in Sunbury was one of the richest men in Australia at that time. And he was also the president of the Melbourne Cricket Club. He was in England until September 1882 and was responsible for bringing or arranging Ivo Bly's and team's tour of Australia. The team was entertained at Clark Sunbury Mansion on 24th August 1882 and a friendly social match was played at the mansion grounds. The fake story goes as follows. The urn was presented to Ivo Bly by William Clark's wife, Lady Janet Clark, in a joking fashion. Lady Clark's music teacher, Florence Murphy, who was also a niece of William Clark, was also present at that occasion. When the story is regaled, it was always said that the urn was presented to Ivo Bly by Janet Clark and Florence Murphy at the mansion in Sunbury. And this story gave birth to the theory that the ashes was born in Sunbury. In her diary, Lady Clark has noted that the cricketers were entertained at the mansion and a friendly cricket match was played, followed by a grand dinner and a dancing at the ball. So far, the story is correct. So far, the story is correct. Only the presentation of the urn by Janet Clark and Murphy never happened. 
But now, let us look at the facts. Daily Mercury published from Queensland from 1906 to 1953 published an article on 19th August 1926 named The Ashes of Cricket and it carried a transcript of Ivo Bly's interview to Evening Star in London. When Bly was asked about the urn, he replied, Some Melbourne woman purchased an earthen ware five inches high and filled it with ashes and sent it to me before we sailed and I brought it to England and kept it ever since. That was his reply. And the some women he was mentioning, one was his wife Florence Murphy and the other, the most prominent woman of Australia at that time, Janet Clark. So the fake story of Sunbury should be buried here itself. If it was presented to him by his wife and Janet Clark, he would have definitely mentioned it. But he has mentioned some woman from Melbourne. As per the Sunbury version, the urn was handed to him. But he clearly says it was sent to him before he sailed. The urn is 11 cm high terracotta artifact which some believe could be a perfume bottle which contains ashes of a cricket bale. Two labels pasted on it. The top one says the ashes and the bottom one is a verse cut out from the Melbourne Punch magazine which was published on 1st February 1883. It is equally perplexing to know how a paper cutting published on 1st February 1883 became part of an urn which was presented to Bly on 24th December 1882. If we go by Ivo Bly's version of the urn presented to him after the third test, everything falls in line. If we are going by the Sunbury version of events, we have to cook up many stories to put the puzzles in place. It is also noteworthy that nothing that supports the Sunbury version of events came from the mouth of Eva Bly, Florence Murphy or Lady Janet Clark. All evidence points to the other direction that it didn't come from Sunbury or from the mansion. In 1900, after the death of his brother, Eva Bly became the Earl of Darnley and inherited the Cobham Hall. The Earl remained at Cobham Hall until Bly's death in 1927. In the 1950s, a journalist from the cricketer approached Sir Rupert Clark, who inherited the title after the death of, death of William Clark, to confirm whether the Earl was presented from the Sunbury Mansion. Sir Rupert Clark didn't respond, most probably because he didn't want to put his name to a fake story. The only confirmation came from his cousin Michael Clark. Michael Clark said, and I quote, The story told to me verbally by old Pat, the woodman at the Robert Wood, was that the English cricketers played a social game with other gentlemen on the cricket paddock, the sloping piece of land between the house and the railway line. This was about Christmas time. They knocked the cover off the bale and afterwards it was burnt and the ashes put in a vase or something and was given to the English captain who married Flory Murphy from Sunbury the following year. He was lord and took those ashes to England. It looks like even Michael Clark didn't want to add his name to the story. So he put it on old Pat the woodman of the mansion. Isn't the story look like the children saying, a little bird told me? In the next 20 years after Bly's campaign, the word ashes largely disappeared from public domain. No one called the series as the ashes. The term became popular again after 1903. It is worth contemplating how a fake story became part of Australia's cricket history. A bunch of wagging tails who describe themselves as historians 
cooked up their stories to prove their point. So Sunbury was never the birthplace of the ashes. It is a cooked up fake story. Today the mansion is home to the administrative office of Celestian College in Sunbury and it is off-bound to tourists.